Hey chat, how's it going? Welcome to our stream today. Um, how you all doing? It is good to be here. It's been a while since we had a midweek stream and it feels good to be back. Um, you might have noticed that I've titled this one a little bit differently to usual. Uh, that's because I have a bunch of little things that I want to check out. Um, in a way, this is a little bit of a trial for maybe how are we doing midday streams going forward, where we kind of do a little bit of something here and a little bit of something there, because what I've often found is outside of times where I have something very specifically I want to cover, during the week, um, I get these kind of little bits and I'm like, okay, well, I'll save this for some point when I'll eventually get to look at it, and my backlog, my very famous backlog at this point, um, you know, just really 
gets out of hand. Uh, and maybe these kind of fun little hangout streams where we meander. We take a mosey through all of the stuff that I, uh, I want to take a look at. And as you'll probably guess from the title, uh, we'll have a little bit of old Nintendo today. We'll have a little bit of uh, coding, perhaps. We'll have um, at least one cheeky round of Chrono Photo, I think. And maybe a little bit of Mario, too. Because um, I suddenly remembered there was a Mario thing I wanted to check out just before this. Uh, but enough talk. Let me do some hellos, and then we're going to get into it. Who do we have here? I see Gaming with Griff. Hello, gr uh, Griff. I wasn't sure whether they could call you Gaming or Griff there. Hey, Arch. Uh, hey, Movies XP. Hey, Voxy. Uh, Voxy, congrats on the wonderful Playdate uh, dev stream earlier today. Um, I had it on in the background. Uh, it was so, so nice to see you making progress in your little um, uh, micro game like. Uh, hey, Bari. Hey, a weird guy. Hey, Disco. Uh, hey, someone. Hey, not Freddy Killer. Welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, I think we're going to get started with one cheeky chrono photo round um, before we dive into the meat of today's stream. Uh, so bear with me one second while I turn off this banjo music. And I think we're going to listen to some Panel de Pond soundtrack, maybe for a bit. Okay. Uh, let's do some Chrono Photo. In case you haven't seen this before, um, uh, we have to kind of guess what year it is. Or as uh, closely as we can, guess what year our photograph is going to be. Um, I'm going to just do one round. It's just going to warm us up. Got to get those juices flowing. Um, I gotta start thinking about numbers. No for realsies here. This is the only round for realsies. Four photos. We're gonna do a great job. I thought it was just gonna be a gray screen. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, this is a great photo. Okay. Hey, some random gaming channel. Welcome to the stream. Uh, are we in France? Okay, so these are 90s cars. Ooh. Ooh. Oh well, that's gonna that's gonna be a doozy to fix. Uh man, I, I think that's gonna take us a while. It's gonna cost you a couple couple hundred dollars or euros. Um Yeah, that's a that's a nasty one. You hate to see it. Um has he got a bag of rice? Oh no, it's just just like a, a, a plastic bag. Uh, so we're in the 90s. Faux show. But not... Not by much. Can we see the plate on the van? It's a 91 plate. Hey, Scrubs, welcome to the stream. I need to up my uh, monitor a little bit. I can't hear the music. There we go. Um, so yeah, we're at least 91, but I would say probably closer to 95. Let's get a look at the uh, the folks here. I feel like I've got like a, an order of operation now. Um, you want to check if there's anything in the signage that says a year, because quite often you'll see like a year in, you know, in something like this, if this was a clearer image, we might see cheese shop of the year 1995, and then we know it can't be before 1995. Um, and then it's like, look at the people's outfits, look at cars, of course, look for technology. Where are we? Left hand drive. Continental Europe. So many tuck shirts. Yes, 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 yes. Judging people's haircuts is another good one, Arch. 
Um, yeah, it is friends. Hmm. Like, <clears throat> I don't think we're any later than at the very latest. 97. I don't think we're any later than 97 here. I think it's tough when you've got a bunch of cars. These cars are clearly like 89, 90, 91, but they look, they look old. This one, you know, especially this van, this 91 plate van looks old by this point. This one looks surprisingly fresh. But this is not a 75 vehicle, so maybe the plate stuff is not as uh, uniform in this country. Because in the UK, up until about 2000, up until about like 2008, I think, plates were literally just the final bit was what year and what portion of the year. So you can know exactly what year it was. Um, yeah, exactly. Disco says, assuming everybody has a brand new car from that year. Right. Which you know, is very much not the case. Hmm. So I'm gonna say, my gut's telling me 95. Hey RJ, welcome to the stream. Hey Choops, welcome to the stream as well. I hope you have a nice bite to eat. What if this guy's watch has not only like day and date, but also year? Hey Stinkle, welcome to the stream. Okay, I'm gonna say 95. I think this will be one of those where we're like maybe a year either side. Zoom in on the shop on the left. RJ's going 93. Also, yes, absolutely do post your guesses in chat. Um, I'll give you a little fanfare if you get it right. Like, is that a little bit of rust under this handle here? Is four years enough time for a handle to get rusty? I'm doing it. 95. 93! RJ even put 93. Good job, RJ. Oh, yeah, I did say a fanfare. All right, let's keep moving on. Happy with that. It's a nice green one. Uh, I love a year either side. Like if I get a year either side of the actual name or actual year, excuse me, I class that as a win. This is a bit further out than I would like, but it's a good start. It's been a while since I played um, Chrono Photo, so I gotta ease myself back in. Oh boy, okay. Ooh. Okay, so we're somewhere between I'd say at the very earliest 52 and the latest, let's say 68. We're not any later than that, right? Or are we? No, probably not. It depends what country we're in. This is the thing that we find a lot here. Um, Arch says one year off is a lowercase w in my book. Yeah, okay, agreed. I can, I can, I can accept that. Um, like, where are we? So, right now I'm thinking like 59. The globular light bulb. That's very nice, yeah. I'm trying to see if I can... I mean, not that it ever tells us. I would love for it to have like... Uh, a little bit of more information after you guess. So I want to know where this was taken. I want to know what this is. I guess it is just their paint pots and brushes, I think. Just testing out different paint pots. Hey, Natalie, welcome to the stream. Uh, good to see you again. Um, it's great to have you back for some more chrono photo. It's a bit like bacon. Oh, that would be a that would be a good bit of bacon. So 
so it's definitely lunchtime. And those are big old pots and pans and ladles. I'm trying to look at the presumably teacher or, you know, um, you know, whoever's looking after the kids in whatever um, basis they are looking after them on. This is a 50s do, more so than a 60s. Um, a bit more modern than it seems. Well, there's a few things here because I feel similarly boring. There's a few things here that when I was trying to think of what the top end was, the children's haircuts feel later than this, than hers. And there's like... I don't know what's going on with this this dude's trousers. I mean, they're very- they're fresh. Let me just get that out of the way first. They're fresh. It's a good look. But I don't know... It- that makes me feel like it's even- either even earlier than the 50s, or significantly later, so like... 60, 68, 69... It's weirding me out. I can't even tell what material it is. Floor looks too modern. It's it's like a lino, isn't it? Or Yeah, that's a that's a good shout, Natalie, I think. It's very high gloss. It ends here, so it's definitely laid down in a sheet. But I think lino has been around uh, in this use case for a long, long time. Where was I before? I think I was on 56 before. Might stick with it. Do you reckon that this could be... Do you reckon this, this could be a clipping from a newspaper? Because it's definitely got, um... Like that dot, uh, like the screen separation here. Maybe that's what's making it feel older than it is. Like this, for some reason, this is saying 70s to me. When I look just down in this corner, throwing the newspaper variable into the mix. Yeah. What? Where are they? I, man. I might snipping tool this and see if I can reverse image search it later. Want to know more. Windows look very fresh. Is this balls? Like... Things for throwing around or things for eating? Okay, so I was like... Right down here before, and then I'm like up here now. So let's maybe just go... Let's just go 60. Let's just say 60. Kind of in between where I was thinking. What does he know? If this is a cafeteria, it wouldn't be unreasonable for a, for a dinner, dinner lady to have a classic look. Okay, 60. <laughs> Man, that's not a good- that was- that was the furthest off I've been for a long time. Dang! Talked myself out of that one. Kids- these kids with outfits, with- with- with style that is ahead of the time. Lowercase L. I think that's a capital L. I really love these chairs with the, like, wooden bolts here. I think they'd be very sturdy. Scrub says I thought the year was 1302 for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Natalie says I think we we're thinking average public school. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, true. I guess a red one would be a capital L. No, you're right. What if red was double L? XL. Okay. Round three. Okay. So we are 
pre-1920, we're probably on the 1905 end of things. Uh, where are we? I can see an L at the start here. Uh, earliest we can go here is 1900, which helps us a little bit. Because honestly, looking at this, I would have guessed it was turn of the century, but more into the 1890s. Uh, but we can't even go... <laughs> Getting some early, uh, early guesses from folks. Uh, man, it's gonna be a bit of a guess on this one. 1903 feels right to me. I don't know what this is. Is it like a little altar? It's really interesting. This is not an, like an architectural feature that I'm familiar with. The little photographs here. The lowest is 1900, correct, yep. I'm also, yeah, like I know it, I know that this isn't GeoGuessr, but I am also trying to work out where we are. What language is on the banner? I can't tell. It's definitely EL at the beginning. Um, and it honestly, that looks like a date to me, although it's not a date that I can make out. It kind of looks like it says 18. I mean, from all the way back here, it looks like it says 1882. Um, oh, it says you don't know about the egg shoot. They're extremely common. Oh, of course. I should have known. Look at these lamps too. But the thing is, in a place like this, you know, a big um, factory environment, they're not going to be using necessarily the um, latest fittings and finishes as well. I bet somebody who really knows about industrial sewing machines could tell us exactly what model of machine this is as well. Although look, this is interesting. They are feeding some kind of wide ribbon through whatever it is that they're making. Are they making, is it these boxes that they're making? Oh, it's maybe that little bit here. Um, ah, making cigarettes. Oh, really? Wow. Maybe like this is maybe for labels or something. I really don't know. Okay. I'm going to do it. Sometimes you just got to say that looks like a 1903 picture and go with it. Um, all right, I'll take it. Capital W win. All right, last one of the round. Oh, okay. Uh, 20... Definitely after 2008. Uh, looking for dates immediately. I'm guessing... That's got to be like a 2008, 2009. Boxy says, Dom, where's Mustard? Uh, I will do a proper... I'll do a proper chrono photo stream with Mustard one time. This is just a little primer. We'll do like a whole stream. We'll, we'll gorge ourselves on chrono photo. Hey, Otto. 
24 out with taco burritos and quesadillas? Where's Boyle Avenue? Mmm, donuts. Is this the photo from the first video dojo meetup? <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely happening. That must have says 1980s. He's a time traveler. Look at those jeans. There's a lot of fabric in those jeans. Lip gloss and hair clips are giving 2007. I feel like all the car designs we're seeing here, nothing is like later than a 2013 for sure. Like we're, si we're definitely, maybe even say nothing here is later than a 2010. Like if that was brand new, 2008 maybe. I think they're making me say 2010 because look at this car this is like a 90 this is probably like a 93 95 if anyone wants to get a 24-hour taco it's on Boyle Avenue the corner of Boyle and uh what <laughs> Wister can't read that one. All right, looks pre-iPhone. That's an interesting shout. iPhone's 2007, right? But nobody really had an iPhone until the iPhone 3G. So that's what, like 2009 maybe? <sighs> that's a very good point, honestly, Arch. Party supplies? You've got everything here. You've got donuts, you've got pizza, you've got tacos, burritos, quesadillas. You can then clean your clothes after you spill all the delicious food on it. Yeah, let's go, let's go 2009. Wow, early. Very, very early. That's much earlier than I would have guessed. Um, yeah, I feel like these cars read much later. Like 2008, 2009. Well, I say much later, but I mean... What's this, Arch? Is this a... This is like a tiny text W. Within five years. Not great. Anyway, there we go. Oh wait, there's five rounds! Natalie would have said 06, but that was a good one. Yeah, I think folks were going earlier than me. Um, I was I was off on that one. Oh man. 1901. I suppose it... Well, it depends where we are again. Um, I think this is probably later than that, actually. I'm honestly using the photograph itself, you know, the kind of um, material quality of the photograph itself here a little bit. So maybe it's a bit later than that. Um... I don't know, not feeling super confident. Movie says feels like 1920s, Freddy says 1905, I get the vibe. Um, let's go 1909. What kind of books have they got? Well, this is actually one of those little um, tiny uh, blackboards, I think. 
You know the little slates? Um, that kind of just looks like a textbook. I don't think it's thick enough to be a Bible of some kind. But these are pews, aren't they? These benches are more, more like pews, but... It's definitely a classroom. We've got a board here, we've got posters up here. Uh, yeah, let's just do it. Whoa. So yeah, look, it's it's cases like this where you need to, like, we you don't need to, but I would love to know the context here. Um, where are we? Dang, Bori got it very, very close. One year off. Very, very nicely done, Bori. That's a that's a capital W. Um, yeah, like after you've made your guess, I would love to be able to read more about it. And I, gu I guess it depends on where they're sourcing these photos and how much information is available. But they must be confident enough in the year that the photograph was taken, right? Because that's how it made it into this collection. Uh, so presumably if they've got the year, then they've got some more information about it. <laughs> Dead parrot rant on that one. I'll take it. Uh, let's see what the game results are. Okay, it was a good start. Yeah, this one... This one tripped me up. Classic one of overthinking it. Um, brought it back round with the perfect 1,000 points. Fell short here. Chat, de chat definitely had the right call on this one. And this one was just... A bit of a curveball. Um, context clues are, are really everything. And if you um, don't have a reference point for that... Uh, can be tough. Ah, uh, right, Bori. Sorry, I thought that was your guess. Yeah, it is um, later than I would have thought to. Although, honestly, we probably should have looked at the clothing a little bit closer. I feel like dungarees are a 1910s onwards, and we were sh short of that, you know, like probably not even till the 1915 so we probably could have gotten a little bit closer if i'd really thought about it um yeah yeah clothing would have been key all right well pretty happy with that overall uh that is my score here i don't know what the difference between final total and high score is in this context Either way, give me a moment because we're about to switch over to uh, something a little bit different. As I mentioned at the top of the stream, uh, today's stream in terms of the structure is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be jumping around to a few different things that I want to take a look at. Um, so... Uh, there might be some exciting stuff down the line. No for realsies. I'm being strict. We've got a lot to cover here. Don't for these streams, you'll need to do full on 90s TV thing with interstitial skits. Little cartoons, like little bumper cartoons as well. Okay. Here we go. Um... Ooh. I had a weird thing where, um, for some reason my desktop just isn't being captured properly by OBS anymore. Um, so I'm having to do everything window capture, but honestly, honestly I think it will work out good for the stream. Here we go. We're going to look at GD script. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the interactive learn GD script from zero um, tutorial put together by GD Quest. Uh, we've had, um, we've had a thread on the Discord for a long, long time, um, that Arch put together. A really great resource. Um, this is, GD Script is the coding language in Godot. Um, 
it's something that I've been meaning to look at for a long time, and uh, I'm hoping that this will be a nice, gentle easing into it for me, um, because I really am starting from zero as this tutorial seems to be aimed for. Um, so let's have a look and see how we get on. Okay, I think there's going to be quite a bit of reading here, um, but once we actually get into it, there is um, sections for us to code ourselves. So um, I'm going to read through this information here. Um, I have actually looked at the first tutorial briefly, not kind of completed it, but just had a look through to see what the structure was like. And uh, it's not all this wordy. So um, let's just get through this section first and it will kind of open up a little bit from here. Learning to program could be daunting. In fact, before we start, let me just increase the text size for those of you watching on mobile. Learning to program can be daunting, yet you want to make video games. So there is no way around learning to program. Every video game is a computer program. Telling the computer what to do. Programming is the process of writing precise instructions that tell a computer how to perform a task. A game's instructions are, for example, moving a character, drawing a life bar, or playing a sound. To do any of that, you need to learn a programming language, a specialized language to tell, you, tell the computer what to do. And then we've got a little block of code here. Natalie says, wish Dave Nodon was here to witness these baby steps. Ah. Uh, shout out to Dave Nodon, a real G. Oh, it says, Dom remembers us 144p gang. I wish I could make it bigger. Honestly, it should should be able to fill the screen. But all this white space here. Okay. Um, so, looking through these, I can kind of maybe guess what some of, some of this does. But hopefully, we uh, will know more concretely as we go through this. Programming languages are different from natural ones like English or Spanish. The computer does not think. Unlike us, it can't interpret what you tell it. You can't tell it something vague like draw a circle. Maybe zoom with the browser controls. Uh, this is actually a standalone app. Um, it runs in Godot. Um, it's not a... Uh... There is a browser version that you can play on itch, I think, but I downloaded the standalone. See you some random gaming channel. Okay, you can't tell it something vague like draw a circle. Which circle? Where? Which color should it be? How big should it be? The computer needs exact instructions. To draw a filled circle, the computer needs to know exact drawing coordinates, the radius, the thickness, and the color you want. To, uh, the code to do so may look like this. Click the button to run the code example and see the results. So, it says draw a circle. Uh, We've got an open parenthesis here and a close down on line five. And between that, we've got vector two and then zero, zero, comma, 60, color dot aqua. So let's draw the circle here. Perfect. So there's a few things that maybe based on what we've done together with uh, Dave in Fuse 4, some things that maybe I recognize We've definitely done some Vector 2 stuff. Um, some things that I can maybe intuit. This might be how, what the uh, uh, diameter of this is. And obviously color is pretty straightforward. In the following lessons, you'll learn how this code works. For now, we want to give you a sense of what computer code looks like. In this example, everything matters. Each parenthesis, capital letter, period, and comma. The computer always does exactly what you tell it to. No more, no less. It blindly follows every instruction. When you program, you're the one in charge and you're free to do anything you want. How do you give instructions to a computer chat? Is it using a programming language and precise instructions or is it using prose in plain English? Um, while you're having a think about this, I will mention that this is a uh, GD Quest resource. Um, GD Quest makes tutorials for Godot. Godot is a open source and free game engine. Um, and Godot 4.0 came out recently, which as I understand it, it has um, some pretty big 
over holes. <laughs> Bori says, using prose in plain, plain English, and then the little, like, stick the tongue out emoji. Um, Curbs Workshop says, quickly saying this before you try Godot. Oh, before you try, Godot doesn't know what bisque is. Uh, it's trash then. <laughs> Foxy says you have to write a beautiful poem and serenade the computer, duh. Oh, it says BR. It looks like all the, uh... The code heads in chat are saying it's used prose in plain English. Uh, but as a baby programmer, I'm gonna say, gotta be this one, maybe. There we go. Computers don't understand natural languages like English. To make them do anything, you need to give them precise instructions they understand using a programming language. You'll learn to code with GD script. In this course, you'll learn the GD script programming language. The name stands for Godot script. Um, so I also believe that um, GD script is like the uh, uh, the the language that is specific to Godot, um, and maybe it's reminiscent of some other languages out there. Um, but I'm not super familiar with those languages or the differences between GD script and those, but maybe that's something we'll also learn, or maybe something that uh, chat can point out. This is a language by game developers for game developers. You can use it within the Godot game engine to create games and applications. Sega used the Godot engine to create the remake of Sonic Colors Ultimate. Engineers at Tesla use it for their cars dashboards. Uh, look at this. It's the blue blur. GDScript is an excellent language to get started with programming because it's specialized. Unlike some other languages, it doesn't have an overwhelming amount of features for you to learn. Uh, yeah, so I've heard this mentioned before about GDScript that because it's for games, first and foremost, it's not kind of like an, uh, an existing language that could be retrofitted to be used for games, uh, that maybe it's a little bit more streamlined in that sense. Most programming languages are similar. Don't be afraid of being locked in. The concepts you learn in your first programming language will apply to the, all the others. Most languages have more similarities than differences. Once you learn one, it takes much less time to become productive with the next one. Here's an example of the same code in three languages, GDScript, JavaScript, and Python. Try to spot the similarities and difference. So we've got GD, GD strip, blah, 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 GDScript at the top here. Um, so this is about taking damage. We've got function, take damage, amount, health. Now Dave from Fusarina has told me what the minus or uh, minus equals means. And I forget. Um, is it when it's less than or equal to? Is that the kind of code version of that symbol? It means you decrement. Wow. Voxy, I didn't even know decrement was a word. I know increment, but I didn't realize is decrement the the, the like antithesis of increment. It's the first value minus the second value, and that's what the first value will be. Wow, I've never heard of decrement. That's really cool. Antonym, yeah. Huh. I thought I'd be learning about GD script. But I'm learning about English. All right, so if health. <gasps> And then we have Java here and Python at the bottom. Yeah, and they're pretty similar. You can see some formatting differences between them. Um, it doesn't look that different, does it? Okay, then we have a little uh, question at the bottom again. So get ready, chat. Are programming languages all completely different? If you learn one language and then want to learn another, will you have to start from scratch? 
No, they have many similarities. Yes, they are completely different. English. Um, I think we know the answer to this one. You're right. Most program programming languages build upon the same ideas of how to program. As a result, they are mostly similar. It's not to say all languages are the same, though. Some offer a really unique syntax and require a completely different mindset compared to GDScript. However, languages like GDScript, Python, JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, and many others build upon a similar programming philosophy. This is a course for beginners. If you want to learn to make games or code, but don't know where to start, this course should be perfect. Good little guy. We designed it for absolute beginners, but if you already know other languages, it can be a fun way to get started with Godot. We will give you the coding foundations you need to start making games and applications with Godot. Please be patient, it will take time before you can make your first complete game alone. Learning to make games takes practice. Creating games is more accessible than ever, but still takes a lot of work and practice. Do not expect any single course or book to turn you into a professional. Programming is something you learn through practice. If something doesn't make immediate sense, don't stress it too much, keep learning and come back later. Enjoy the process and celebrate every little success. You will never stop learning as a game developer. What and how you'll learn. In this free course, you'll learn the foundations you need to start coding things like those. Inventory. Uh, maybe, um, pathing? Course for babies, exactly what I need. Scrub says your Fuse 4 knowledge will translate to this. Uh, yeah, if if any of it has uh, has stuck, it's been a while since we did more of it, but I'm sure there will be principles um, that Dave beautifully outlined during those Fuse 4 streams that I'll be able to use here. Uh, speaking of which, we do have another Fuse 4 stream coming up um, uh, this Sunday. Uh, we had a little bit of a delay uh, between our last one with Dave and this one, but it is so great that we're going to be having another one on Sunday. Isn't it interactive? You can try the arrow keys. No, these ones here are just um, diagrams, I guess. Along the way, we'll teach you some of the mindset you need as a developer. Too many programming courses skip that essential part. How to write GD script code, essential programming foundations to get you started. As you go through the course, you will have many questions. We will answer them the best as we can go. Wait, <laughs> them, <laughs> the best we can as we go. But there is so much to cover that we have to take a few shortcuts. We don't want to overwhelm you with information. We also want to respect the pace at which our brains memorize things. We broke down the course into short lessons and practices. If we put too much into each part, you'd learn slower. If at any time you're left with burning questions, you're more than welcome to join our Discord community. That's the GD Quest Discord community. Programming is a skill. Programming is a skill. <laughs> so get good at it. It must, you must practice. It is why we built this app. Each lesson is followed by an interactive practice to use what you learned. Speaking of which, it's time to look at the practice screen. To continue, click the practice button below. It will give you a short run through how practice works. Okay, it's getting real. See you, Natalie. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, so try your first code. Goals. We prepared a code sample for you. For this practice, you don't need to change anything. To test the code, click the run button below the code editor. This one down here. Uh, we've got some hints. Run the code. Let's look at the hints just uh, so we can get an idea of what kind of hints are in here. Click the run button. Perfect. Okay. Oh, look at that lovely GD Quest boy. Preview window. Okay. Let's do it. Running your code. Running tests. World learn. You completed the practice. Stay and play around or continue to the course. Well, there's not much we can play around with right now because all it does is uh, print welcome, I guess. In fact, I didn't even see it print welcome. Oh, down here, on the output, of course. So this is our, um, yeah, our output. So anything we print will appear down here. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's continue. 
Lesson complete. Ugh, oh, I'm a natural. Console, thank you, Voxy. Yeah, it's the console at the bottom there. Uh, your first error. When you program, you are bound to run into errors. Tons of them. But you shouldn't worry. On the computer, errors are a good thing. You will encounter errors, and that's okay. Every programmer does, especially professionals. At school, maybe you learn that mistakes are a bad thing. When you code something, it's not the case. Errors help you write correct programs. A code error looks like this. It's a message that, a message that tells you some bit of your code doesn't work. The error here is the function move already exists in this class at line 22. Making errors friendlier. Error messages can look a bit, bit cryptic. This is because they're designed by programmers for train for trained programmers. We added an error translator in this app that will help you get started. It shows you why an error happens and what the message means. It also gives you some tips on how to fix it. Uh, this music's a bit intense, so bear with me one second. Deciding what to put on instead. Movies XP says that makes sense because errors feel not good. True. Oh, I found a really good soundtrack and I closed the tab and now I can't remember the name of the video. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, um, so the error translator, it shows you why an error happens and what the message means. It also gives you some tips on how to fix it. So here's an example of an error from the error translator. What song is this? This is Diver's Dream for the PlayStation. Uh, it's the first track off that. The function move already exists in this class at line 22. Right, that's what the error was up here, the example error. Oh, actually, yeah, 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 it is. Why this happens? You are trying to define a function or variable that already exists. You can't do that. Perhaps the function or variable variable already exists in the current code file, but it may also be in a parent class that this GD script code extends. And then it looks like we have a dropdown that suggests how we can fix it. In this app, Sorry, in the app, your code extends some built-in Godot code that's not visible to you. When that happens, you need to either rename your function or variable to one that will not collide with an existing one or remove this line of code. Errors. Errors are messaged, messages designed on purpose by fellow programmers who came before you. They anticipated you might have specific issues. You shouldn't think of an error as a failure. They are like mentors helping you from the past. Importantly, errors won't break your computer. At least not with GDScript, because it's a pretty safe language. Okay, so it says, our error is good or a bad thing in code. We've learned they're good, they're here to help. Hey, Grape Juice TV, aka Dallas, welcome to the stream. You're right, yes, errors are here to help you. Pay attention to them and do your best to read and understand them. With experience, you'll learn to make your code work more reliably thanks to error messages. Okay, let's see an error in action. Once again, click the practice button below to face your first real error. Okay, this code is incorrect and will cause an error when you try and run it. All right, let's try and run it. Aha, uh -huh. we have an error. The code defines an empty function named this code is wrong. To work, the function should use the return keyword, but this keyword is currently inside a comment which the computer ignores. Right, so I remember that you can use um, certain symbols and that symbol is different in different um, languages to indicate that you want to comment out that portion of the code so that the computer itself doesn't act upon that and it's more just as a, uh, a note for anybody looking at the code. Test the current code by pressing the run button, then remove the comment sign 
which is a hash in this case, to make the code valid. Be careful not to remove the spacing before return. Um, otherwise, that will cause another error. You may try that too if you feel like it. This. Either way, we know we need to get rid of that. Um, and we've done it, so let's have a look at the hint as well, because I think it's got some useful info in. Well, in this case, not. Okay, uh, let's run it and see whether that error goes away. Perfect. We completed the practice. Don't play around or continue the course. Nothing to play around with this time, so let's keep going. We stand on the shoulders of giants. As programmers, we rely on a lot of code created by others before us. Every programming language comes with a wealth of features created by other programmers to save you time. We call a bundle of code created by fellow developers a library. Ah, okay, so just reading chat, Voxy says, looks like GDScript uses indentations to detect if something is meant to be part of the function. Right, okay, that's really interesting, good to know. Um, so, uh, we call a bundle of code created by fellow developers a library. It's a bunch of code sitting there waiting for you to use it. Game engines like Godot bundle many libraries together. They provide a massive tool set to save you time when making games. You'll always use a lot of existing code. When coding, you always use a lot of code from developers who came before you. In a moment, you'll write your first code. You'll use functions created by the Godot developers. A function is a list of instructions with an exact name. We can tell the computer to execute all the instructions in sequence with that name. Calling functions. When you tell the computer to ex execute a function, we say you call the function. To call a function, you write its exact name followed by an open and closed parenthesis. To call the function named show, you would write show and then open bracket and close bracket. In Godot, calling show, parentheses, makes something visible, like a character or item. The complementary hide, parentheses, function hand, uh, hides the entity. Okay, that's straightforward. Once an entity is visible, calling show again doesn't have any effect. Similarly, once you hide something, calling hide again doesn't change anything. Click the run button on any example below to execute the code listing. So we've got func, and then we've got run, open and close. And then below that, we've got hide. So I'm guessing that this will disappear once we click run here. Hey, easy. In the code listing above, we write the function call hide in a new function named run to execute the code. Creating a new function is necessary to execute instructions in GD script. Can you tell me more about that run function? In GDScript, unlike some other languages, we must write our code inside custom functions. You'll learn what functions are and how they work in great detail in the course, but here's a quick look at them if you're curious. A function is a bundle of code you can execute anytime. It's a named list of instructions. To define a function, you need to write the func keyword, the function's name, parentheses, and a colon, there it is, defines a function named run. You then go to the next line to write the function's body. That's the instructions of the function. Notice how each instruction starts with a leading tab character as Voxy already spotted. Um, wait, I lost my place. I got so excited. Uh, there it is. The computer uses that to know which lines are part of the function. Throughout the course, you'll see many functions called run. Those functions we created those, those are functions we created to give you interactive examples. Function arguments. We use parentheses to call functions because you can give the function argument inside the parentheses when calling it. So here, we could add extra stuff. Hey, Mr. O, func, like disco? Exactly. Here's a sprite standing straight. If we call the rotate point three function, the character sprite turns by 0.3 units. 
So we've got run up top like we will probably always have here. And then we have our indentation, rotate 0 0.3. And we get a bit of rotation. <laughs> Watch this, Dom's getting excited over coding tutorials. Nerd emoji. Uh, no. Oh, look at this, I can keep running it. Woohoo! Yeah, look at that, Bori and Voxy, way ahead of me. Okay, the 0 0.3 part between the parentheses is the function's argument. Right, so we've got a function, we've got an argument here. Arguments are values, uh, numbers, bits of text, and more that change how the function behaves. Arguments let you fine-tune the effect of the function call. They can be optional at times, but functions often require arguments in order to work. For example, calling rotate parentheses without any argument would result in an error. Without an argument, Godot doesn't know how by how much you intend to rotate the sprite. So yeah, if we didn't put the point 3 in here, it wouldn't understand how much we needed to rotate by. Um, don't worry about mem memorizing what arguments each function requires or accepts. As a programmer, the documentation will always be close by for you to refer to. Finally, notice how we use a dot in the number 0 0.3 above. You need to use a dot like this to represent decimal numbers. You can't use commas as they have a different purpose in code. What are radions? Radians. <laughs> Aliens. The value of 0 0.3 is an angle in radians. In daily life, we use, we're used to measuring angles in degrees. The radian is another scale commonly used in video games and maths. I like one of those two things. You can convert radians into degrees by multiplying them by 180 and dividing them by pi. Degrees equal radians star 180 slash pi. Mm -hmm. An angle of pi radians corresponds to 180 degrees and to... Is, is the star... I'm trying to remember back to... Um, Dave's wonderful Fuse 4 tutorials. Is the star uh, times? Anyway. Two. Oh, it's multiply. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, chat. So you convert radians into degrees by multiplying them by 180 and dividing them by pi. Okay, radians are a way of measure to measure angles based on the radius of a circle. To get the angle in radians, you take the circle's radius and wrap it around the circle. The, that angle is one radian because you're wrapping the radius one time around the circle. Because the parameter perimeter of a circle is 2 multiplied pi multiply radius. A full turn, 360 degrees, corresponds to 2 multiplied pi radians. You need to wrap the radius of a circle 2 multiply pi times around the circle to make a full circle. Whew. <laughs> Disco says, of course, being made of wheels... Sorry, the being made of wheels loves radians, referring to someone. Boxy says, if you notice, they, these are the symbols that replace the times and divide on your number pad. So they are. I've never noticed. I'll be honest, never spent that much time looking at a number pad. But I guess I'll have to, I'll have to learn to look at number pads more closely. Okay. What does the code below do? Show. Does it call the function named show, or makes the entity, like a game character or a sprite, visible. Give chat a second to make their decision on this one. I think I'm pretty confident with the answer. 
this time around. It is, I think, that we're going to make the game character or sprite visible. No, of course it isn't. Right. It is the function named show. Where was sh show up here? Ah. So it does make something visible, but just generally, it also calls the function name show, which happens to make the entity, like a game character or sprite, visible. Trick question. <laughs> Both answers are right. Great job, chat. Technically, the code calls the show function and doing so makes the game entity visible. Another example. With the move local x function, you can move the character to its left and right. The function takes one argument, a number of pixels, to offset the entity. Okay, so the argument here for this function, the move local x function, will be a number of pixels to offset the entity. The complementary function move local y makes the sprite move up and down. So x is left and right, y is up and down. This is one way to make a character in a game, although we'll see a more powerful way to do this later. Okay, so we've got, we've got the run function, we've also got the move local x, and our argument of 20, and we've got our move local y and an argument of 20. So let's run this. Great. See you, little guy. What do you think his hands are made of? They're kind of glowing. Music's a bit loud. Let me, uh, let me bring it down. Thank you. There we go. Um, why move local Y20 moves the character down? So I think this is going to talk about... I'm trying to think back to, again, to Dave's Fuse 4 tutorials. And I know that we had to use minus 20, for example, uh, if we wanted to go away from the origin point, right, in the opposite direction. So I think like x20 would have taken us to the right. Um, so x minus 20 would have taken us to the left, I think if I'm remembering from that. But let's see whether it's the same here. With positive values, 20, the code above moves the robot to the right and down. This is probably different than what you studied at school in maths classes. The horizontal axis points to the right, like here, but the vertical axis points up. In video games and generally in 2D computer graphics, the vertical axis points down instead. So whenever you move something on the y-axis with a positive value, it'll move down. Okay. Or it says, um, well, it means zero, zero is the top left corner of the screen. Gotcha. Boxy says, basically the pixels on the screen are counted starting from the top left corner, which represents zero, zero coordinates. Thank you both. Okay. How do you call a function? What is the syntax you use to call a function in general? It's not asking about a specific function, it just means in general here. Do you write a value like a number followed by an opening and closing, uh, closing parentheses? Do you write its name followed by an opening and closing parentheses? Or do you write its name followed by a colon? Uh, so I, I think it might be two, but let's just double check. So this is a function. Uh, that's its name. And there's the parentheses. I write a value like a number. No, you definitely don't start with a value. And... 
you don't put a colon after. Woohoo! To call a function, you need to write its exact name followed by an opening and closing parentheses. If the function requires one or more arguments, you add them inside the parentheses. Whether you need to do that or not depends on the function. Yep, so again, just I'm kind of saying this out loud to remind myself. This here in the parentheses is the uh, argument. Okay, we've got two practices this time. So it's starting to open up a little bit. We have a parenthesis here, sorry, a practice here to make the character visible. The robot's invisible, call a function to bring it back. Our robot character is invisible. Call the show function to make it appear. Please call the show function inside the run function on line two and keep the tab character at the start of the line. The computer needs that to understand your code. Okay, so let's go show. Open and close. Ooh. Um, we're going to look at the hints again, just to get any extra info. The code should call show inside the run function. So we're inside, thanks to this indentation, the run function, and we've got our show. We don't need any argument in there. Um, cool, let's run it. Perfect. Okay, now this is the second practice in uh, lesson three here. The robot was turned by minus, should I say minus or negative? I don't know whether, I don't know which one's correct. Uh, 0 0.5 radians. You need to make it upright by calling the rotate function. Please call rotate inside the run function on line two and keep the tab character at the start of the line. The computer needs to know, uh, needs that to understand your code. Again, yep. So we want to go rotate. Oh, interesting. Is it is it automatically closing the brackets? It is. Okay, that's good. It's good to know. Uh, we'll look at the hint again. Ooh, got three hints this time. You need to use the rotate function and give the proper arguments. Call rotate 0 0.5 to turn the character 0 0.5 radians clockwise. You need to call the rotate function inside the run function. Right, so we have everything here except for um, the number of radians we need to uh, adjust our character by. So it was previously rotated uh, minus 0 0.5, so we're going to now just push it back with a positive 0 0.5. Still a little bit loud. No, do not apologize, Voxy. Um, I really appreciate being told about stuff like that. Okay, nice. That should be it. Let's take a look at our GD Quest boy. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's keep going a little bit. Drawing a rectangle. We'll use code created by others like we did in the previous lesson. This time, we'll solve a more complicated problem. Drawing shapes. Arch says, this song gives me Namco Museum vibes. Yeah. It's that really, really reverby. I don't even know what that lead would be, that kind of like crystalline synth. Okay, meet the turtle. We present you the turtle. We changed, so we recreated the turtle to teach you how to call functions. Look at this little guy. The turtle is a little machine that moves forward, turns, and draws lines along its path. <gasps> Did anybody ever play with one of those? Do you know those little, um, those little, I was going to say robots, but I guess they're kind of like RC cars, really. That you put, um, you put a pen, a felt tip pen in the top of, and you put a sheet of paper underneath, and you like program in. Well, there's kind of two types. There's those ones where you program in like move forward five steps and then move left 
and it will draw a path. Or there's the ones where it just goes crazy. And it just goes all over the place. Um, and makes a, a fun, fun pattern. They rock. I think it's probably Sunshine just reading through your messages. It's probably because uh, we're focused on, on this at the moment. We'll get to some... We'll get to some wackier stuff. I'm sure you will see chat get extra wacky. Okay, so to make it draw, you give it a list of instructions. On each code line, you call one specific function. We prepared several functions for you. Okay, so we have three functions here. Move underscore forward pixels makes the turtle move forward over a given distance in pixels. Turn underscore right degrees makes the turtle turn to the right by a precise amount of degrees. So we are using degrees here, not radians, um, because this is a function that's been prepared for us. Um, and then we've got turn left, which is the same as turn right. You'll use these functions the same way you used rotate before. The turtle draws a white line as it moves. We'll use this line to draw shapes. For example, to move the turtle 200 pixels, you would write move underscore forward 200. Foxy says the turtle reminds him of the logo programming language. I had a toy laptop from VTech that had logo programming built in and has a turtle logo too. Ah, I've not ever, I know VTech, but I've never heard of the logo programming. Okay, so let's run this. I'm guessing we'll go 200 pixels to the right here. Oh, look at that little, uh, little line too, as they promised. The functions turn left and turn right work the same. To turn 45 degrees to the right, you would write turn 45. Um, the turtle if we call turn right 45, the turtle turns 45 degrees to the right before moving on to the next instruction. Okay, so maybe we're getting a little bit into the um, the order of things here because it's going to be doing one thing at a time. Um, because as it mentions, if we use turn right 45, which is the second one here, uh, line three, the turtle turns 45 to the right before moving on to the next instruction, which should be move forward 80. Okay, so that was our move forward, our turn right, our move forward, our turn left, and our move forward. Great little turtle. Using these instructions, we can make any two-dimensional shape we like. Try to understand the examples below. In the next practice, you'll use the functions we saw above to draw a corner, then a rectangle like this one. Okay, so we've got move forward, turn right 90, move forward 120, turn right 90, move forward 200, turn right 90, move forward and turn right. So we should end up where... Uh, where we started off. Boxy says, I'm so glad we have a little Godot tubes. Yes. All right, let's run. Boing. Hey, and we could have even guessed that um, this rectangle would be longer than it is tall because we've got the 120s uh, on the verticals and the 200s on the horizontals there. Hey, Daily Banana. Arch says, we haven't seen tubes in this turtle in the same room. Just saying. I think you're onto something, Arch. If we see any cheese in this, then we're... We know we're in trouble. In the function call below, which part is the argument? Right, okay. So I kept... Kept saying this out loud earlier to try and cement it in my mind. I believe... The argument is 30. A.K.A. The, uh the part in the parentheses, the value in the parentheses. Yes, a function's argument are all the values inside the parentheses. In this case, there's only one, but it can be multiple separated by commas. 
In this case, move underscore forward is the function's name and 30 is the argument. This function call will make the turtle move forward by 30 pixels. Okay, we've got three lots of practice here. First, we're gonna draw a corner, use the turtle to draw a square's corner, then build upon it to draw a rectangle. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, what's our goal this time? In this practice, we'll tell the turtle to draw a corner. The corner is made up of two lines that are 200 pixels long. The lines are connected at each end by 90 degrees or right angle. The move underscore forward and turn right functions. Sorry? Those functions to the right draw a corner but they're missing some parameters. Oh, 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 it means in the in the code here. Sorry, I was really struggling with the the grammatical structure there, but it's referring to this, these ones here. Add the missing parameters so the turtle moves forward 200 pixels. Turns right 90 degrees, then moves forward again 200 pixels. We added the first parameter for you here. So the turtle moves forward 200 pixels. In the following practices, we'll draw multiple corners to create rectangles. Okay, we won't look at the hints yet. Um, and we will look at that later. So, we've got our move forward 200, so it's going to go this way. And we need to turn right. Okay, we've got our 90 degrees. And then 200. I was just double checking the lengths there. So, yep, two lines that are 200 pixels long each. There are two move forwards. And the lines are connected at each end by a 90 degrees right angle. Cool. Okay, let's run it. Hey, that's a capital L I can get behind. Uh, let's stay here for a minute, though, because I want to do look at the hints. You need to add two parameters to the turn right and move forward functions 90 and 200, which we did. We've got our check, and in the documentation here it says method descriptions. Void, move forward pixels integer, moves the turtle in the direction it's facing by some pixels. Why does it say... Why does it say void ahead of it? What does void mean in this context, chat? out of interest. Is that just the indentation? Or something else? Um, turn right, degrees, integer, rotates the turtle to the right by some degrees. So this is just the extra documentation talking about what each of these functions does. Void means it can be used on its own, maybe. Interesting, Voxy. Okay. <laughs> it says that phase when you realize Beauty Quest Boy isn't real. What? Disco says, I don't know why, but making a turtle turn seems to be the common beginner programming lessons in many languages and programming classes. Interesting, Disco. I wasn't um, aware of that. Um, I wonder what the lore is there. Maybe like an early programming language lesson had that in there. It's kind of like the little... Um, it's kind of like that little uh, boat that you print on a uh, 3D printer. You see it everywhere. It's just become the standard. Or, um... There was that bunny for, like, 3D rendered stuff for a long time. Voxy says, it's a good way to understand algorithms, I suppose, because it breaks things down a lot. Yeah, I guess I meant more specifically, like, why a turtle? It seems like the turtle element, because it could be any animal, right? Or any anything. But I guess there might be some reason why it's a turtle. Okay. Let's continue on to our next one. The 3D teapot. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, Arch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Bori said, by the way, just referring back to that void in front of it, um, it's because it doesn't give you an output, I think. 
So it looks like um, there could be a couple of different uh, possible interpretations for that. I'm sure we'll get to it at some point. Okay, what's our goal this time? Add the correct parameters to the functions, move forward and turn right to draw a rectangle with a width of 200 pixels and a height of 120 pixels. That sounds very familiar to the one we saw in the example, so we'll keep that in mind. We wrote the first parameter for you, so we've already got 200 up there. In the next practice, you'll use the same function to draw a bigger rectangle. It's a turtle because it's based on those robots you mentioned. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right, let's do it. So we've got our 200 on the move forward. We want to turn at a right angle, so that's 90 degrees here. Uh, we only want 120 on the horizontal. We want to turn right again. In fact, let's do all the turn rights because they're all going to be 90. Then our length on the return is going to be 200. And then our move forward at the end is going to be 120 again, I believe. Um, nothing new in the documentation here because we're only using these same two functions. Let's give it a go. Fantastic. Great, we passed the test. Um, and let's just stay here to look at the hints again. Both move forward and turn right. Take a numeric parameter between the parentheses. Yep. Turn right's numerical parameter indicates how many degrees the turtle should turn. Yep. Move forward's numerical parameters indicate how many pixels the turtle should move. Great, I think we've got these down um, pretty nicely. Hey, there we go. Voxy's confirmed that the void in front here on the documentation indicates that this function uh, doesn't return a value. Some functions are meant to return a value you can use elsewhere, but this isn't the case for those. Thank you very much, Voxy, and great work, Bori. I'm trying to remember there's something that signifies that in the Fuse language as well, right? I remember... Um, Dave talking about whether or not it returns a, uh, a value. Is it the color of the function in um, Fuse? Either way, let's continue on. All right, we're going to make a bigger rectangle this time. They promised it earlier. Write out calls to the functions. Move forward and turn right. To draw a rectangle with a width of 220 this time, and a height of 260. We wrote the first two lines for you. Be sure to write each instruction on a separate line. Every line should start with one tab character so the computer understands it's part of the draw rectangle up here function. Okay, draw a rectangle of 220 by 260. So we're drawing our first line across here, which is 220. We're turning right 90. We're move underscore forward ing. Um, to 60 we're turn writing oh hang on aha uh -huh, yeah of course we turn right 90 now I know I could copy the existing ones here um, but just to get into the rhythm I'm gonna just type them out um, So this is going to be a 220 again. And so we're moving forward, we're turning right, we're moving forward, turning right, we're moving forward. So we still need to turn right and move forward one more time. And one last move forward. And it's going to be a 260 this time because it's our vertical. Okay, I seem to think that's going to be our bigger rectangle here. <laughs> Art says, snaps photo of baby Dom programming his own. Put it on the fridge. Scrub says, yeah, you can return void when you don't want to return a value in fuse. Aha, okay, so... Uh, we've seen that previously with Fuse. Interesting. 
Sunshine says, I know nothing about coding. Sunshine, do not worry. I was and am in the same boat. The uh, only experience I've had uh, up until this point is with the helping hand of Dave from Fuse Arena, um, looking at Fuse 4. But that's only been a couple of hours, even with Dave's incredible tutorage. Uh, I'm really coming at this fresh. But that's ideal in this case because this GD Quest uh, tutorial uh, is starting from from scratch. All right, let's see if this is correct. It's a big rectangle. We pass the check, and let's continue just to have a look at the um, hints, just to check that there. If there's anything new here, okay, same stuff from before. Also, I'm going to put, um, uh, I guess I'm going to put the Nobby Nobby Boy soundtrack on. I feel like every soundtrack that I've had so far has gotten dark like midway through. All right. Very, very nice. Let's do one more of these today. We'll do number five, coding your first function. Um, and then we'll move on to some other stuff. Okay, so far we have called existing functions that other developers wrote. In this lesson, we'll talk more about what functions are and see some examples. Then you will learn how to define your own functions. Ooh. Functions are named sequences of instructions. Functions are sequences of instructions we give a name. We call that name an identifier. Used, using the identifier, we can get the computer to execute all the instructions inside the function as many times as we need. This is what a function call does. In computer programming, we talk about identifiers rather than names. It is because a function name is a label the computer uses to precisely identify and refer to a function or other code elements. Again, this is something that Dave very uh, um, beautifully explained. Um, previously. Identifiers are unique. You cannot reuse the same name in a given space in your code. If you try to name two functions the same, the computer will raise an error. If there is any code that you need to run multiple times, you can put it to put it inside a function and give it a name. The instructions inside a function can be any code you want, and they will all run every time you call the function. Here's the example of a move and rotate function that moves the turtle forward and then turns it 90 degrees. So this is, um, this is the same as before, but with a different identifier, right? Because I don't believe it was called move and rotate in the example we did in the last lesson, but the functions themselves do the same stuff. This still need to come down a little bit? Probably. There we go. <laughs> Disco says, when you think about it, turning a turtle ain't so different from turning a crank. Functions are like the actions in WarioWare DIY coding when you think about it. Nice, thanks Voxy, that's a good, um, a good kind of reference point. Okay, so there's our move and rotate, just as we had before. The move and rotate function consists of two instructions, each on a separate line. Both of those instructions call another familiar function. You could write another function that calls move and rotate four times to draw a square of length 200 pixels. Right. So, we have a function called draw square, which consists of these four functions, which are um, move forward and turn right, kind of sandwiched inside there. A delicious little um, move forward and turn right sandwich here, inside move and rotate, which itself is one component 
that comprises the draw square function. A blob says making your own functions in Godot is kind of fun in my opinion. I just like batching a lot of instructions into one function then calling that function instead. Aha! Very cool to see um, an example of people using these in their own stuff. <laughs> Boris says, draw square is just a name slash identifier. You are giving it, creating a new function. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Bori. Every time we call move and rotate, the two functions move forward and turn right are called in sequence. In this specific example, it may not feel super useful. Here's a more useful and realistic one. A function to draw any rectangle. The following function uses parameters, which we will explore in the next lesson. Drag the slider to change the square's size. Ooh! Look at this! Look at this! Okay, so we have a parameter now that exists alongside our function. And that's modifying the move forward every time it's called here. Let's do 200. And we'll also do a 20. Okay. How to define your own functions. Let's break down how you define a function. A function definition starts with the func keyword followed by a space. The function's name, parentheses, and a colon. So we've got func, space, what we want to name our function, um, and whatever the parameter will be in here. And don't forget the colon at the end. The instructions inside the function must all start with a leading tab character. You can insert that tab character by pressing the tab key. We call those leading tabs indents. They're important. The computer uses them to know which instructions are same the, uh, part of the same code block. But yet we've got func, name, parentheses, colon, indent, instruction one, indent, instruction two, indent, instruction three, uh, and the computer will understand that as all being within this function here. I guess components of this function? I don't, I don't know exactly what the correct name for those would be here. Why do we use functions? Select all that apply. Okay, so there's more than one here that is correct. To run multiple instructions in one go, to put a name on multiple lines of code, to reuse code multiple times. Instructions. Yes, of course. Thank you, Bari. <laughs> it literally says it here. Oh, look. Oh, that's nice. In case we need a refresher at any point. Uh, so yeah, to reuse code multiple times, that was something that was um, really clear of, uh, example of the benefits of this. So I'm pretty confident on that one. I doubt that it's to put a name on multiple lines of code. I don't even know what that would be asking. So, to run multiple instructions in one go? Yeah, that seems to make sense. What does to put a name on multiple lines of... Oh, right, right, right. It's all of these. I understand now because that's saying uh, to give to give uh, um, identifier to multiple lines of code. RJ says, the last Nobby Nobby Boy sound, uh, song didn't let me have a straight face. It sounds too goofy. I love that track. Okay, let's see if that's right. Is it all three? It is. Functions are groups of instructions we reuse every time we call the function. Because we give functions a name, they also allow us to name a set of instructions, which is handy. Right, okay. Names in code have rules. Function identifiers cannot contain spaces. In general, names in programming languages cannot contain spaces. 
The computer uses spaces to detect the separation between different keywords and identifiers. Instead of spaces, in GDScript, we use underscores. You saw this already with functions like move underscore forward or move underscore local underscore x. This is the convention we follow in GDScript. Right, so here it's telling us to um, not use spaces. We can't use spaces in the names. We're going to use underscores um, to separate out words. There's another convention programmers use in some other lang programming languages. Instead of using underscores, they start words with capital letters except for the first one. With that convention, you'd write function names like move forward and or, or move local x. Um, so this is how we were doing it in Fuse, I believe. We were doing that kind of camel casing. Um, whereas here we're gonna use underscores between the words. Identifiers also have to start with a letter or an underscore. You cannot begin with a number, but you can use numbers after the first character. Which of the following names are valid function names? Select all that apply. Note that it's fine to use capital letters. Um, so this one doesn't start with a number, which is fine, but it's using camel case. Foxy says, I'm team camel case. By the way, the one GD script. Oh, the one GD script uses is called snake case. Ah, I've never heard of snake case before. Uh, that is, that is great. I love the silly names too. Um, so no, no underscores here. It's using camel case. Um, jump's fine. Move forward is not valid because it says here function identifiers cannot contain spaces. So move forward is good. 45 degree turn is bad because it starts with a number. Because identifiers have to start with a letter or an underscore. Um... So if that was underscore 45 underscore degree underscore turn, then it would be fine. This one's got a space in it. And this one has capitals. It says know that it's fine to use capital letters. Hmm. Okay, I can see chat with some very good suggestions here. I'm gonna go with this just because based on what it's set up here, um, these are the ones that I, I would naturally select if you weren't here, but I think chat's onto something. So let's submit it anyway. Hmm, okay. So it didn't like that. So what chat was saying earlier is it's asking if it's valid, not conventional, says Arch. And Bori followed it by saying um, that they thought it was tricky. Let me see. Can't contain spaces. So let's try clicking this one as well. Because this one hasn't got spaces or start with a number. Aha, okay, right. So that was the one that we were missing that one that was using camel case. You can't name a function move space forward because it contains a space. Names in code cannot contain spaces. They can't start with numbers either, which is why 45 underscore degree underscore turn is also invalid. So pretty happy that those two were exactly what it was looking for in terms of what is invalid. Um, However, having numbers elsewhere in a function name is fine. That's why make three new characters works. Okay, so it, it is valid, um, but it is not uh, within convention, I suppose. This is the convention that we follow in GDScript as mentioned above. Okay, cool. It was a tricky one. Good job, chat. You were way ahead of me. Instantly moving the turtle to a different position. In order to draw multiple squares in different positions, we introduce a new function 
for our turtle to use. The jump function picks up the turtle and places it relative to where it is. So called jump, sorry, so calling jump minus 150 moves the turtle by 100 pixels to the left and 50 pixels down without drawing any lines. So we've got here the function draw three lines and that is move forward 100, jump, so move forward 100, jump minus 100, so back to where we started, and 50, so is that down? Oh no, this will be... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yes, it will be here, won't it? Then move forward 100, jump back, so don't draw a line, and go down 50. Okay, let's see if that's roughly... Yep, perfect, okay. Because the minus is going to indicate that we're going left. The 50 is indicating we're doing, going down. Okay, got it. Practices. A function to draw squares. Until now, you've had to write code by hand, and it's boring. It's time to code a reusable function, or use it to draw multiple squares. Code a function named draw underscore squares to draw one square of length 200 pixels, the function should take no parameters. Use the move forward and turn right functions to instruct the turtle. In the following practice, you'll use the draw underscore square function to draw multiple squares by calling your own function. So that's for the next practice, but for now, we need to code a function named draw square. So um, I'm guessing that we don't need to do the... Uh, whatever the top line was on the previous ones that were set out for us. So let's just do func. Now let me try this first. I'm probably going to get it wrong, chat. Um, but getting stuff wrong can be helpful for learning. So it doesn't take a parameter. So we just need to indent here for our instructions for this func. Um, and that's going to be... Uh, we're going to draw a square of length 200 pixel, pixels. So we're going to do move forward 200 followed by turn right 90. And I think now I feel comfortable enough to copy these. In fact, I can copy both. Ah, I shouldn't have got the uh, indent there. One more. So we're going to move forward 200, we're going to turn right, we're going to move forward, we're going to turn right, we're going to move forward, we're going to turn right, we're going to move forward. We don't need that last turn right. A blob says, oof, there's something already missing. Uh, I'm not too concerned. Like I say, I think um, uh, I'm bound to make many a mistake as we go through this. Um, and that's, that's, that's only natural, but I appreciate all of the knowledge that chat brings. So once I get it wrong, um, I can't wait to, to, to hear the reasons why. Um, so let's try running it. Ooh, I think I just realized what I'm missing before we run it. Um, yes, a colon after the parentheses without a parameter inside. Is that the only thing that's missing though? Let's have a look. So there's our lovely 200, 200, 200 square. Hey, and we got a check. Nice. Okay. Good. 
Uh, let's stay here for a second because I do like to look at the hints just in case there's anything new. The function body will be very similar to what you did in the previous practice. Yes, it was. Don't forget to add the leading tab character in every line. That I was pretty happy with. That feels very natural to me. Um, the function definition, the first line should be func space draw underscore square col uh, parentheses colon. So, yep, I almost missed that colon. Uh, it looks like chat was way ahead of me once again. Um, thank you very much for all the, the GGs. Arch says, Dave would be proud. I can't wait to, uh, to share my knowledge on Sunday. Cool. Shall we move on to, I think, the final practice of, uh, lesson five. Drawing multiple squares. You have a function to draw one square, draw underscore square. Use it to draw three squares. We already created the draw underscore square for you. Create a function named draw three squares that calls draw square three times. If you just call the function, all three squares will overlap. To stack them diagonally, call jump 300 300 between two calls to draw square. Calling jump 300 300 makes the turtle jump by 300 pixels to the right and 300 pixels down without drawing any lines. Okay, so we've got our... Um, oh, interesting. I wonder whether... Okay, I wonder whether this will cause an issue, but let's just go like this for now. I kind of naturally thought maybe it would make sense to make a line space between these, but we'll see. So... I need a new function and it's going to be called draw three squares. Parentheses, colon. Um, and then my, um, I'm just trying to remember what the name of this is inside the function. Um, Instruction? Was that what it was called? Is going to be draw square. Um, but it's telling us that we also need jump 300, 300 between. So I think it's going to be, we're going to draw the square. <laughs> Then we need to jump, which will take us down this way. So we'll do the jump now. Oops. And we need a space after the colon, er, the comma here. And I'll just type out draw square again. And now we can copy this and this. Okay, so. Oh, 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 oh hang on, wait, 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 wait. Got my order wrong. There we go. Yeah, so we're gonna draw the square, then we're gonna jump down then we're going to draw our next square, jump down, and draw our final square. Or at least that's what I think we need to do here. Okay, let us give this a shot. There's our first square. There's our nice jump. Our second. And our third. Our new function, draw three squares, worked beautifully. Lesson completed. Nice, let's stay and see these hints. You need to define a new function below, let's draw square named draw three squares, we did that. Your new function should call draw square three times on three different lines, yep. Between each call to draw square, there should be a call to jump. I really love this way that we can outline exactly what we want something to be, and then we can just call that down in the code rather than 
Could you imagine how many move forward turn rights we would need to do all of this? Great, good, good stuff. Okay, so it looks like lesson six is your first function parameter. We're not gonna do that today. We'll come back to this next time because um, we've got some more stuff to check out here today. But I'm gonna need to get myself some water. Water, because uh, there was a lot of reading there. Um, and when we come back, we'll be taking a look at some old Nintendo videos and playing a little game, a little short game that I wanted to check out for a little while. So uh, stick around, don't go anywhere. Um, let me put the drink break screen up. Where is it? Where's it hiding? Wait, where is it hiding? Oh, I'm on the wrong one here. Bear with me. There we go. Water. Uh, just before I go, RGC says, I've been working on a real game made in Unity for a month or so. Wow, congratulations, RGC. Uh, since you're trying random stuff for this stream, at the end of the stream, could you possibly consider trying out the first level? Uh, RGC, if you're at the stage where you're ready um, to show it off and it's already hosted somewhere, um, then... Absolutely. Obviously, the usual stuff applies. Don't um, don't want to show anything that I wouldn't normally show on stream. Um, and if it's too big to either like post on itch or something, it might cause some issues. But I'll definitely give it a try. Um, as long as we don't run over time. Anyway, let me grab a drink and I will be right back. See you in just a sec. Hey chat, I'm back. I did that thing where I poured myself a drink, drank the entire glass, poured myself another drink, drank a bit of the second glass and then topped it up. I was thirsty. Thoisty. Oh, it says, what kind of water you got there, mate? Um, pretty cold water from the tap today. We're kind of somewhat coming to the end of warm water season. Okay, man, I'm drinking my second cup so fast. <laughs> Disco says, Dom likes his water like he likes his eggs. Hidden? I don't want anyone hiding water from me. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to close down this wonderful. Oh, wow. Okay. Just, just closes. I thought it would take me back to the menu, but whatever. Uh, I will bring the start card back up while I get the next thing prepared. Yeah, I hope it saved my progress too, Boxy. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I mentioned this before. I, I know you can't see it yet. Uh, I mentioned this before as something I wanted to just watch on stream. Um, I have seen a few little snippets of this. I even posted as a short, a very short snippet of this. Um, I guess I should give the preamble now so I'm not just talking over the entirety of it. Basically, I believe in... Um, 1993 I think it said uh, Nintendo commissioned the Nintendo in the UK commissioned a um, video a promotional video about the Super Nintendo to advertise some of the games and some of the functions it seems and uh, Craig Charles who is a UK TV presenter a uh, particularly prolific presenter in the 1990s uh, and also a character from the series Red Dwarf, or an actor who plays a character from the series Red Dwarf, is the host. Um, I, I've been di dying, bad daying, to watch a watch the full thing. So we're going to do that together now. Let me switch over. Uh, make sure it's seeing the window. There we go. Oh. Hmm, why is it not seeing it? Either OBS or my PC is being really strange today. It's not showing up. Music's still playing. Yeah, I know um, movies, don't worry. Uh, Mostly just surprised that that's not capturing that window properly. On a scale of 0 to 10, how British will it be? Oh, just you wait. Maybe I can't full screen it. Huh, that was the issue, it seems. Wait, but you still can't see the content. Wait, is, um... Does VLC have, like, anti... Some kind of anti-streaming thing? No, that's not a thing, right? It doesn't have, like, a weird HDCP kind of thing on it. Aha, okay, I've changed the capture method. Okay, good, that works. All right, here we go. Let's turn the music off here. See you, Nobby Nobby boy. And uh, let us start this. I'm gonna have to adjust the volume to make sure it's just right for everybody. Okay, that's probably about right. Let me know if it's too loud. I want you to be able to hear this. Right then, thrill seekers, here we go. We've got some 
amazing insider information for you game with flying SNES. Not off. We've got reviews of the latest games and what the experts think of those games. Why was the expert made of paper? City and what it all means. The Mario story, where, why, and how did a little Italian with a mustache become a worldwide superstar? We've got tips and tricks on the latest software. There you go, official Nintendo material referring to Mario as Italian. Super Nintendo game, and we look at some of the excellent gear that you can get for your Super Nintendo. But first, let's get the show on the road with Look at Craig's um, Nintendo. Uh, well, like medallion. Of all time, actually started life as a carpenter who had lost his girlfriend to a gorilla in the 1980 game Donkey Kong. He was such a success that Japanese video game programmer Shigeru Miyamoto decided to make a <laughs> Miyamoto. To game called Mario Brothers. <laughs> Mario joined with his younger brother Luigi, and the rest is history. The follow-up game, Super Mario Brothers, sold over 43 million carts worldwide. And Mario overtook long established He's not your like Mickey Mouse he's not Donald Duck. Your Yamoto, he's my Yamoto. As he's gained his new powers, explored even stranger worlds, and conquered even more grotesque enemies. Mario even took to the skies in Super Mario Bros. 3 and swam like a fish in his first. I wanna know where these little animations Super are from. World. Ever versatile, I don't think I've ever Mario seen them before. Also proved himself a wizard behind the wheel in the amazing Super Mario Kart. RJ the Great says the floating SNES seems to be the JP version. Uh, the European version of the Super Nintendo uh, looks like the Japanese one. To mark the new stardom, Nintendo released the Mario. He's our Yamoto, says uh, says Bori. So that now you can relive every slip into danger, every hidden escape, and every moment of glory in Mario's long history. Well, not everyone, because it's not got the Game Boy games. Bravo ski, Mario ski. He's a bit like me, you know. Obscurity one minute in your living rooms the next. My name's Craig Charles, brought to you live by Nintendo. <laughs> that clipping wasn't on my end. He just... I think that was... I think that was clipped from the original recording. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Venture back to Hyrule and an age of magic and heroes. Oh, nice touch to put the, the reverb on his, on the on his voice. When a menacing magician takes over the kingdom... Only you can prevent his evil plot from shattering the land of Hyrule. Ah, uh, the animations from the All-Stars commercial. In your quest, you will venture into twisting mazes, dungeons, palaces, and shadowy forests. Chat, I don't think this series is going to catch on. With mighty swords I, I don't think this, weapons, uh... Or heft a boulder and hurl it at your enemies. This little elf game is going to work. If the going gets tough, dive into a river. You can swim to escape. Learn RGC says spells, this isn't going to lead to a broom situation, is it? I highly doubt it. The evil magician if we do... Realm of Oops. It's if we do, we do, but I, I highly doubt it. Super Mario Kart. This is a split-screen, one or two-player go-kart racing game. Super Mario's Automotives. You and either the computer or another player take the part of the Mario Brothers characters in a one-off race or as part of a championship. Those oh, no. With all of the Mario, Mario got really stuck on the, the Monty Mall there. Different scenes from previous games. Such as castles. <laughs> Foxy says the narrator games. sounds so enthusiastic. You can also have great fun with the battle mode, in which two players play a form of bumper cars in order to burst one of the three balloons attached to the cars. This is one of the best racing games. This ever, might sound like a really, really uh, silly question, but I legitimately do not know. This is, the this is a question to any Americans in chat. Do you refer to them as the bumper pilot, cars Tom there? Cloud, commander of a squadron called the R Wing. Your mission is to destroy the evil Venom Empire. Their oh, they're doing a lot with the production on the, As you can see, the VO here. Amazing. Did you hear they, like, um, the flanged the voice there? Scrub says, yeah. You'll need all of your game playing skills to RGC your says, what do you call them? Fans. No, we call them bump cars, too. I just, uh, for some reason, I imagined that they would be, that would be a very UK thing. Zitz, Rash, and Pimple, the Battletoads, have been invited to Tibet to watch a demonstration of a new computer game. When one of the images jumps out of the screen and Wait, is that actually the lore of Battletoads? I didn't know that. Out what happens next. Go karts are called bumper cars. No, 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 no. Sorry, I, that was very confusing of me. He mentioned bumper carts in the battle mode. Um, I mean those things that you you go at the fun fair and they are in like a little. Uh, oh no, where's Craig gone? Not go karts. 
Hi. Hi. All right. You're known as a hotliner. What does that mean? Hotliner is someone who has played and completed all NES Game Boy. Hang on, sorry. Where did he say he was? Also, wait. What's on that poster? Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter... That's definitely Street Fighter 2 at the top, but then why does it say POW here? Prepare for... Does it say prepare for intensive care? Because you're gonna get, like, punched, punched and kicked by the cast of Street Fighter 2. Well, I think it's about time I beam down to meet the hotliners. <laughs> that was a great face he made. Ooh, I hate it when that happens. This is hotliners headquarters, but what does that mean? Hi. It's an extremely 1993 fit that Craig Charles is rocking. Hotliner is someone who has played and completed all NES, Game Boy and Super Nintendo games, as well as helping the consumer with information. Helping the consumer with information. What's this game you're playing now? At the moment I'm playing Street Fighter 2 Turbo. He's playing Street Fighter 2 Turbo and getting paid for it. It's like he's died and gone to heaven. So what do the kids want to know about this game then? The main question is, is how to do the special moves with the bosses. Sure. So Mikey, um, what do you... Oh, I can't say Mikey because we have Mikey. So, S Stephen, what do you... Um, what is it that you do for work? I know that you do something with computers. I, I help the consumer with information. Sorry, you do what? Uh, if this if they're st stuck on the games. That was a move then. Right, the one I show you is the torpedo roll using bison. What you have to do is hold back for two seconds and forward punch. Marvelous. Did the anyone ever call the Nintendo? That's ten thousand calls a week. Nintendo hotline. Also, that's weird. O seven numbers are now mobile numbers. Marvelous. I didn't know there was a the period of time where O seven numbers were um. like business numbers. Man, I wonder who got the old Nintendo hotline number as their mobile number. <gasps> Can you imagine getting... Hang on, there's not enough digits there, is there? No, there is. Voxy says, let's find out. I was so... I'm... <sighs> I was so tempted to, to, to dial it, but I but I shouldn't. Don't call numbers. Don't call random numbers. I 100% would call that number if uh, if I wasn't on stream. <laughs> Archer says I called it and nothing happened. Don't call numbers. It's the official video dojo stance. Don't you need one more number? Hang on, let me just do the... I'm going to do the mental maths here. Oh yes, it is one... one digit shorter than a mobile number, despite being 07. An 07 number. There would actually be one more good spot, uh, Bori. Yeah, there'd actually be... 4, 3, and 4, I guess, right? <laughs> Don't call numbers exactly, Voxy. <laughs> Fourteen hundred calls a day. That's ten thousand calls a week. That's over half a million calls a year. That's oh yeah, the thing I was going to ask is, did anyone ever call a Nintendo hotline when it was still a thing? On, yeah? How long have you been here? Three years. Three years. Yep. So, what's your favorite game at the moment? My oh look, hang on. Man, all right, we got a Starwing poster here. Um, I actually don't recognize. Oh, that's the that's the All Stars poster, isn't it? That's Mario wearing the top hat. Every game at the moment must be Starwing. Starwing, good game, good game. 
Star Fox uh, was originally called Starwing here. It was actually called Lilith Wars. What would I have to do to be a hotliner? I'll take you on a wing. Why is he so? Why is he so close? Synchronicity. The hotliner. You'll be able to be a hotliner. Loving, giving, so, do you think I could be a hotliner? Um, maybe, maybe I could take you under my wing. It's hard work, though. Uh -huh. You know, we've got a team of experts working round the clock, training us. And you've got to care, because we constantly care. Uh -huh. And you've got to have coordination and synchronicity. You've got to be well mannered, good with people, communicative, communicative. It's essential. Okay, I haven't got the big time edge. I haven't got the total coordination and communication all this, skills uh, you need to make it as a hotliner. I can live with smoke that. Machine. Time to review smoke some in games. Here. Guide Aladdin and Abu through their quest to My goodness, Jaffa. I got jump this scared. By... Game features excellent cinematic graphics. <laughs> Super paper hotliner sounds, over here. There is a password facility and bonus screens. Look at this those glasses though. Sure to be a hit. Oh, Very now we're talking. <laughs> With a mouse, so you can use it to draw, paint, and animate your own images. Compose music to go along with What's that? And Skrillex. <laughs> Skrillex's first job was as a uh, hotliner in the UK, that's right. Oh, look at this. Chance to race all Why have they got him just? The weather is constantly changing from sunny to cloudy to wet. Why, why he is he just repeating across the street? The screen. The uh, speed and graphics on this game is amazing. <laughs> Basically, play the game and you'll see what I believe. <laughs> he literally, he literally could not be any less enthused. I've never heard anybody deliver a line to camera that monitor. Listen. Nigel Mansell's World Championship Racing. It's the best simulator available for the Super Nintendo at this time. Get a chance to race all 16 courses around the world. The weather is constantly changing from sunny to cloudy to wet. You get a chance to change the tires. Ch change the tires. Arch asks, is this a comedy bit? It does have like Tim and Eric energy in many, many ways. Aerofoils and your engines in your car. Uh, the speed and graphics on this game is amazing. This game's got speed game and graphics. A new cold hero hits your screen. Uh, mm. <laughs> no, you can't do that. That is, that was literally a jump scare. Speed and graphics on this game is amazing. Basically, play the game and you'll see what I believe. A new cold hero hits. Can I frame? Oh, I can't frame by frame in VLC, I don't think. Purple guy jump scare. It's your screens in the form of Plock. How do you describe Plock? Well, basically, he throws his arms oh, he's gone. at the enemy. Plock is a massive cartoon platform game with incredible music and stunning graphics. Not only will this game go number one in the game chart, but number one in the music chart as well. Um, that might be a, a little Vikings, hyperbolic. Olaf, Eric and Baylog have got to find their way back to their <laughs> village. This may sound easy, but it's not. <laughs> what what are they fight, doing? 37 different levels and six different worlds. They've got to combine. Okay. I need the editor to, to explain what they were doing here. Right, so you're gonna make him green, uh, sort of like the colors of the the Vikings in the game. Okay, I get it. But why are you distorting his body beyond recognition? Game okay, number one in the game chart. But Explain one to me what that has to do with Lost Vikings. The Lost Vikings, Olaf, Eric, and Balog have got to find their way. <laughs> The blob says this was on television. It was on a, a promotional VHS. <laughs> Nothing better than a bored guy trying to sell you a game while traveling between dimensions. <laughs> RGC says editors had some fun with this one. Definitely. Back to 
to their village. This may sound easy, What if this wasn't a video effect and he's just extremely flexible? 37 different levels and six different worlds. They've got to combine the three skills of all the Vikings to get through this intensely puzzling and frustrating game. God. <laughs> they didn't even let him finish him his line before they faded him out of reality. On this Bobcat's travel. Not one of these uh, Nintendo Hotliners has had any kind of screen presence in their delivery. As well as collecting all the yarn balls that he may encounter. The 16 make cart has great music and graphics as well as some <laughs> actual footage of a leprechaun says art <laughs> just phasing around <laughs> sorry what did he just say there the best speech i've ever seen on the super nintendo he has become a cult hero in america and looks like doing the same in the uk you heard it here first bubsy gonna become a uk cult hero fantastic but what always amazes me and i'll share this with you is how they fit all the music visuals excitement and all round top Ooh, chat what do you reckon was on that it's blank cart fantastic but what always amazes me and what's I'll on share this with you is how they fit all the what's on craig's blank super nintendo cart you think it's just an empty shell or do you think they peeled the label off something? Hopefully off the Bubsy cart. <laughs> it says multi-cart. 100 in, in one. <laughs> Bubsy zero is a blob. The music, visuals, excitement, and all-round top quality entertainment into one tiny cartridge. Is that really how big that ridge is on a Super Nintendo cart? I guess it's just very harshly lit in a way that you don't normally see that emphasized that much. So how, how did we get, get all of that into, into this? this? I think an interesting... So, so, how, how, how did you get this on all of this? The interesting thing to do, first of all, is to go back a couple of years... When Look at that old Macintosh in the back. Cartridge. Was that an SE? So, so how, how did we get, get all of that into, into this? this? I think an interesting thing to do... F1 first car on... <laughs> a picture of an F1 car in a frame as well. Game. We knew racing games were very popular, and we thought we had the expertise what? and the programming skills to do a very good race. It definitely, definitely said David Martin Gremlin something. To do, first of all, is to go back a couple of years when we first thought, shall we do a racing game? We knew racing games were Oh, popular, right, right, right. Gremlin Graphics is the studio. Very good racing game, so we said we do a racing game. <laughs> Next question we asked ourselves: Is there a personality? Is there an endorsement? Look at this roaming camera. Going to make it even more exciting. We knew Nigel Mansell was doing well in the World Championship at that time. He wasn't world champion at that time, but we thought he might be, and we started speaking to him. Would he be interested in helping us with our game? He was very interested. He likes computer games. He takes a Game Boy with him wherever he goes, and soon we had Nigel on board as well. So we were there. We knew we were doing a Nigel Mansell racing game. What we're going to do now They're giving you some extra uh, building, context so through those how from that point all caps. The game. Okay, uh, now we're going to go ahead and produce the Mansell game. We've had some design here. work. The next stage is to start the programming. We have the computer. And oh, listen to that slap. The code that we write ends up in that. Listen to that slap. That's a solid slap. Where are Gremlin graphics today? Hang on, let me look it up. Let's take a, a brief detour. Um, Gremlin Graphics is a British software house based in Sheffield. It closed in 1999. It looks like the last game they put out was something called The Shoe People. Wait, hang on. But this is from 93. Man, wait, did this game never come out? What system was the shoe people on? I don't even know. It doesn't say what system it was. Wait, so did this Nigel Mansell or whatever it's called, the F1 game, did it not come out? Or is this an incomplete list? And what were they doing for the seven years that they were 
still a company but not putting out games <laughs> the shoe people gbg web okay let's come back to that i have questions but we'll we'll continue on for now what we're going to do now is james is going to take us around the building and show us how from that point did we develop the game okay uh, now we've decided to go ahead and produce get ready for the slap game. we've actually done all the design work the next stage is to start the programming we have <laughs> in which the code's being written the code that we write ends up in that box over there that box is our version of the uh, super nintendo it's similar to the one you would have at home except that what it allows us to do is continually change the program that's running so this is what's in the cartridge that code there this is cool i've actually never seen into this on your super nintendo this is actually development systems for the, the super nintendo road that's used in the Nigel Mansell game. The game is nowhere near complete. Did you see they put an Intel Inside sticker in the top right of the screen, the even Mansell though it's a Sony? Game, the road was the most important thing. You've got a smooth and fast road system, particularly with something like a Grand Prix game. To get this far took, took us, you know, probably about six or seven months of programming. The next stage... Quite frankly, that is a smoother graphics, and faster road, road system, system that I've seen all the other ever before on my Super game. Nintendo. Um, and that's that's what we're going to show you next. Everything that you see in the game will at some point have to. Wow! Be look at the sprites. Have to draw the car with every wheel position to add realism to the actual game itself. As well as drawing Nigel's car, we have to draw the cars that you're going to be competing against in the game. Could we run the animation, Greg? Uh, this is so we can in the game. We Greg, just uh, just run the car re reversing and going forward really fast animation for me. How many frames did it take to do that? Um, we originally used eight frames, but uh, I doubled them up to 16 to make it a lot smoother. It works really well. <laughs> the game isn't just about racing around the track, though. Another important part of the game is the actual selection and setting up of the car between each of the individual tracks in the game. In this section, you can select your tyres, change the airfoil. This is genuinely informative. Below, we also see some graphics for the sponsors, which we're adding to the car graphics. Anything for realism. Whilst the rest of the team are working on the programming and finishing off the graphics for our game, here in the studio, Pat's working on the music. Boss, I've got... I've got horrible repetitive strain injury. I've been drawing sprites for our sponsors for hours. I've got to take a break. No, you can't take a break. Anything for realism. Anything for realism. And sound effects. Could we have a listen to some of the music, please, Pat? Certainly. Once I've composed the music, it's built up of tracks similar to this. Hey, Bulldog. Okay, could you listen to a sound effect now, please, Pat? In an effort to create as much realism as possible, we asked Renault to record the engine sound from the actual F1 car itself. And this is the sound effect that we use within the game. So we've got the program, the graphics, the music. Really? That's a sample. I don't know why that really surprises me. They sampled the engine noises on a Super Nintendo game. I know that the SNES can play samples, but I just feel like... Given the storage, that would be a... Like, you don't get much space to store samples. Maybe it can be really short or something. Maybe they're doing some kind of weird... <laughs> Moxie says, I mean the SNES can play samples. Dom, Dom, anything for realism. <laughs> A blob says, boss, can you turn off the light that's shining in my face? No. We needed a cool rim light. It'd look really silly if it wasn't there for the rest of the shots. <laughs> Let's go and test that game. What we do is... Let's let's go and test that game. Arrange for the programmer to send the finished game down. I wanted to, to see these posters up close. Using this machine, we actually load the program up into these two chips. These chips now contain the whole game. The game oh, it's a, like a an EEPROM prototype cartridge. Writer. And then these are given to the testers to test. Here in Gremlin's test department, we have a team of people whose job it is to play the game. Look at that gremlin. Our testers have to play the games for hours and hours, testing for bugs or for things that shouldn't even be there. When the game is as action-packed and as exciting as possible, only then is it ready 
to be put into a finished car. Imagine if your workplace was lit like this every day. Get all of that excitement. <laughs> Anything for realism. Okay, I think this is probably, I'm gonna guess, this is a completely unbiased, accurate score. Hey, come here. What? This is between me and you, right? Okay. What I want to know is, how can you cheat at some of the games? <gasps> Don't be the Oh, crazy. Super Mario All-Stars. On the Lost Levels, World 1, Level 1, if you want to get some extra lives, this is what you have to do. Go to the first set of blocks and bash the second block to uncover the hidden mushroom. Bounce it with your head over the end block, leaving the coop. Who do you think was coming for Craig Charles for telling us about these secrets? For inside. Grab the mushroom, being very careful not to scroll the screen past the row of blocks. <laughs> Reggie. Now break the first block. <laughs> young Reggie fees a maze coming for Craig Charles. <laughs> Jump through the gap you've made and remove the three blocks from above your head. Now carefully make a small jump. Ah, the look. Mario should bounce on and off, eventually clocking up one ups. Infinite one ups. Leave it to carry on until the time runs out and you'll have 128 lives. Also on the lost levels, World 3, Level 4. The way to get to the end is to stay along the bottom until you've heard a high pitch beep. Then stay along the bottom again until you hear another beep. Now go all the way to the top and stay there until you hear two more beeps. If what's going along the top, you find a jump that's very hard to make, jump down to the floor and you'll find four hidden blocks. You can now use these to get back up to the top route and make it all the way to the end. On Mario from the number of, hey chat, from the number of glitches in that game, they probably should have stayed lost levels. Two, world one, level three. Go to near the end of the level and get the last potion bottle before the RJ door. says the OST is pitched Carry different on athletic. Um, I think the reason it sounds different is because of the, and go down the pipe speed the power roms ran at this will now walk you to world at four. that time. Um, so some games corrected that, some games did not, so it might be, Mario 3. although I feel like for Super Nintendo On games Mario they were nearly 3, always corrected. One, level 3, you'll find near the end of a level, a white rectangular block in the air. Jump onto this and kick the turtle off. Now kneel down on the block until you fall through and land behind the scenery. Now run to the right as if you were going to complete the level, but instead of finishing the level, it will take- RG says I played the power version and it's fixed. Mm, interesting. It could be that the tape- Foxy says, yeah, NS NTST runs at 60 hertz while power runs at 50. Yeah, but Go to Super Nintendo level, games usually were, were pointing downwards. adjusted for those. Jump down and shoot the plum in the tree three times. I mean, it's still not this ideal. To a bonus stage. You now have to beat the timer Plock. in this bonus stage to get walked <laughs> to the end of the island. To get the best out of your games, you should try your hand Wait, what was the master. What was the plot? Designed Hint. for use on the desktop, the arcade style school. Oh, look at this. I'm going to pile up the Statue of Liberty. Six buttons. These are oversized for ease of use and have an auto fire switch for each button. The school master also features a slow motion operation with two speeds. So whether it's quick, quick or slow, slow, the school master will put an extra kick into your game. There is also a great accessory known as the Nintendo Scope. This is an amazing piece of gear, which is an infrared firing machine, laser accurate to one television <laughs> pixel. There are some great oh, that poor, poor blue alien! Bazooka, like Battle Clash and Yoshi's Got no firing. scoped in the eyeball. Why not get one for your shoulder and start blasting? <laughs> I hate to tell you, thrill seekers, but it's time for me to go. Have fun on oh, no. Nintendo. And this may sound strange, but I'll be back. Hasta la vista, baby. Hey, not so heavy on the interaction. There we go. Reggie turned Craig Charles into the letter N and flew him into Uranus.
Arch says, I'm giving this a 5 out of 10 on the British score. I can't believe you're not, you didn't score higher for um, just the profoundly unenthused hotliners. <laughs> the extremely British hotliners. Mario Paint, a new art package for the Super Nintendo. Can, with a mouse, so you can use it to draw, paint, and animate your own images. Music <laughs> to go along with it. I think that was my favorite so one. The video to play again at a later date. It's even better with the Mario Paint music in the background. There we go. It was so much British. Okay, uh, I have another quick video. A very, 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 very quick one. Um, but I just want to also show it. Um, it is... Coming up next. I am going to look up the shoe people arch, don't you worry, but we're going to watch this video first. Uh, this is a promotional VHS tape from the UK games retailer Game. So there is a shop, I, actually I don't believe it exists anymore. Um, wait, yes it does. Uh, so there was two big games retailers um, around 10 years ago, one called Game, one called Game Station. They merged at some point. I guess Game was the one that continued, like the brand that continued. Um, uh, anyway, there's a big long one here that was released, a big long promo video that was released on VHS when the GameCube came out. It just shows a lot of footage of GameCube games. It's not especially interesting. However, At the very end, it gets into like accessories you could buy at game at the time. And I want to take a look at this. Voxy says, I want to watch the whole thing. I'll link to both these videos in the description once we finish the stream today. Um, I don't have time to watch all 45 minutes today because I do still want to play a game with everybody. Um, but we're going to look at the, the accessories section. I also get the feeling this one's going to be louder. So I'm going to turn it down first and I'll adjust it up if I need to. Available on May the 3rd for the Nintendo GameCube are these must-have peripherals and accessories. Look at this. You get the little PS1 style screen for your GameCube. The GameCube controller. Features built-in rumble, dual function analog left rumble. and right buttons, and a new analog stick for camera angle control. Available in three colors, purple or black, or two-tone clear and purple. A four hmm, I guess I don't card, remember the two-tone clear and 59 purple. 59 blocks, essential for saving those important levels and scores in your favorite games. Connect your Game Boy Advance to your GameCube. Why did you say GameCube? This cable allows you to connect your Game Boy Advance directly to the GameCube for use as an additional game screen or controller. From Gamestar. Controller. Uh, oh. I... Even before I understood, like as a kid, even before I understood why they were bad, like I didn't understand, like I didn't know what ergonomics were, for example. I just, every time I had to use one of these controllers, like either for the GameCube or like PlayStation ones, um, you just knew something was profoundly wrong, <laughs> even if you weren't able to articulate it. And I feel like by the time I was able to be like, to make a choice on controllers, like by the time I was buying my own controllers, I, I knew why I wanted to buy a first party controller. But I remember back to the early days of playing games and not really understanding what a third party controller was or why it was bad. I just have like a, a 
visceral memory of being like this controller just feels upsetting <laughs> controller from GameStar has a comfortable design with smooth grips and gives the game a responsive control. The Pro Racer oh, no. is a steering wheel or controller. The Pro Racer is a full featured gamepad and steering wheel in one. With easy to reach buttons, the Pro Racer Wait, but it can wouldn't be used have had any... any game as a controller. It the wouldn't have had any gyro stuff. transforms this controller to a precision what? steering wheel in the palm of your hand. Ah, ooh. It's like the, um, what's the, what's that Namco controller called? Is it the Nedgecon? It's kind of like the Nedgecon. Or am I thinking of the Jogcon? No, I'm thinking of the Nedgecon. You know what I'm talking about? Hang on. Um, this guy, kind of Nedgecon esque. So that twisted left to right rotationally uh, for Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. This white, gray, and red and blue is a lovely color scheme. And then the Jogcon. Uh, was a little jog wheel. I don't know what that was developed for. Oh, also for Ridge Racer. Also, Namco Museum supported it, as Arch points out. Yes. Yeah, was it like two? Is it two that supports it? And the Gun Con, of course. Okay, let's continue. Eight megabyte memory card. Oof. Double the space, double Never the game. Never gonna need more storage than that. For the gamers who want to keep all their game levels. From four gamers. Flight stick. Think what? Ideal for Star uh, Wars Rogue Squadron. The four oh, gamers. Oh yeah, of course, Rogue Squadron. Has an ergonomically okay. styled hand grip, built-in vibration motor, I guess. analog left and right buttons, it was and turbo. Fine fire. on the GameCube controller though. GameCube 5 inch LCD game screen. Four gamers. Now we're talking. LCD oh, the screen, screen was just on. Sound controls comes complete with AV and Hey, Barry, welcome back. Also we're taking a look at a UK AV game retailer's for connecting other GameCube games, accessories video. Players. Oh, now we're talking. Licensed GameCube backpack. Wait! Nintendo's licensed GameCube okay, backpack. Okay, do you remember a while back when we looked at this Nintendo safety knife video? Do you remember that one? The Target or Walmart or wherever it was employee had a licensed GameCube backpack. Do you remember? I think this is the same one. The one with, yeah, technically Wario but voiced by somebody who had no idea who Mario or Wario was. Adjustable shoulder straps and carrying handle will hold your GameCube console and all your Keep that copy of Luigi's Mansion safe. The internal zipped pockets and front zipped pockets are also useful for storing games. These are just a few of the products available at your local EB and game store. Pre-order yours today. <laughs> so I believe EB like um, electronics boutique uh, in the US. I believe EB stores were a thing in Ireland. So we had game here and there was EB in Ireland. Um, which was, I guess, in some way related to electronics boutique. Reserve to avoid disappointment. You don't want to lose your one and only opportunity to get that incredibly sleek GameCube licensed backpack. There's going to be stock shortages. It's to be expected. Nothing they can do about it. That's weight screen material. Yes, Foxy! Oh my goodness. A hundred percent. There we go.
Punk. Uh, okay, let's bring up the start card. That's it for videos. I did see Arch asking who the, like, which team was commissioned to do that Super Mario All-Stars video. I wish I could tell you anything more about who was behind it. I don't believe there's any credits or anything. Although, hang on, let me just quickly search something. Um, Nintendo All-Stars VHS UK. I'm presuming there'll be something on the box. I've never looked at the VHS box. And let me show you this. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, can I find the right window? Man, I really need to fix this. Uh, I don't like having to switch between windows for you. Uh, distributed by Nintendo in Ferrum, Hans. That's just the, I guess, Nintendo UK offices. <laughs> Fari says, they were right. I just called and they're all sold. Sadness. I should have reserved when they told me to. <laughs> Nothing, nothing of uh, of who made this other than Nintendo. Uh, see exactly how the Nigel Mansell World Championship game was created. Okay, so we need to look up a few things. So here's the Gremlin graphics wicker. Ah, uh, okay. Aha. So. This is specifically the Commodore 64 wiki that I clicked on. I, I just clicked on the first one on here. So maybe this is only showing the Commodore games that they worked on. So let's just go to the wiki page. So the defunct date on here, also look at that 1980s graphic. Um, Dissolved by parent, former employee, Studio Sumo Digital. Oh, oh. We know Sumo and the parent is Infograms. Okay. I'm trying to remember what names. I think he, I think he said Gary, didn't he? During that video. Uh, okay, so where is, also I guess I can put this back on. Um, where's Nigel Mansell World Championship Racing here? Last game was Soulbringer. Not heard of it. Hmm. David Barton. Oh yes, yes, well remembered, Voxy. Okay. So it seems like there's, there's still a lineage here. They're still making games. Yeah, where's shoe people? That's what I was coming to look for. Um, should be here. Where is it? Shoe people is a TV show, but presumably, because it was on the Commodore wiki, presumably they made a 
the Shoe People Commodore 64 game. 1992. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wick or er, YouTube it. Hang on. C64, the shoe people. <laughs> okay, I found a video. There's somebody talking over it, but let's just turn the sound off and watch. Shout out to Mad Commodore showing off the shoe people. <gasps> Here we go. Oh, Voxy makes a really good point. One is called Gremlin Graphics. The other is called Gremlin Interactive. Do we even know if they're the same? <gasps> right. I mean, this it's the one that came up when I searched. Right, right, right. It might not be. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it was just what they were trading under between 84 to 94 and 94 to 2000. So it's the same. It's the same stuff. <laughs> oh, it's just dumb. Your face reflection is showing. Oops. Here we go. The Shoe People Games, Margot's Magic Coloring Book. This is what they were doing in 92. Okay, it's showing us a wagon wheel. It's got a delicious marshmallow and chocolate treat. Okay, it looks like a kind of edutainment toy, maybe. <laughs> oh no! Turned into a ghost. Hard tricks. I believe this is the only footage of this game on YouTube. All right, anyway, that was a fun detour. It is time that we uh, move on to the last thing I had scheduled for today, um, which is a little game that some folks may have seen before. I've never played this before. Um, I'm not gonna mention what it is until I've got it up here. It can have a nice little surprise. Um, while some games aren't on YouTube. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I know that there are tons and tons and tons of games out there that are not archived in a way that people can get to them, but it's even crazier to think that there are games that there's not even video of out there. Okay. Uh, I need a controller for this, so just bear with me one sec. Oh, RJ, sorry, I missed your... I missed your message. Um, feel free to repost it. Okay, got my Xbox controller. I'm gonna boot this. I'm gonna turn down the sound straight away because I know it's gonna be loud. Oh, sorry, folks. Okay. Uh, today, we are going to play a little game, uh, or at least for a few minutes here, called... Wait, let me get the window. 
Nope. The Super 1 1 Challenge, a micro game by Sean Noonan. Uh, I believe this first released a few years back, but it was updated um, on Mario Day this year, so 10th of March. Um, yeah, I'd never come across this before, um, and I'm really keen to, to try it and have a look. Um, RJ says, like RGC, I have a non GBG game I would like to show. If you can't, it's fine, but I ask. Uh, if you can, please play it after RGCs. RJ, what I'm going to say is, because we've run a little bit long, actually, I'll do a, when I next do one of these kind of streams, I'll do, I'll put open, put out a call for anybody who's got a game that they've made that they'd like me to try out. So, um, maybe if you've got it hosted somewhere already, you can send me the link. Um, but I'll play definitely yours and RGC's if you get them over to me and I can run them and everything. Um, and I'll put the call out for anybody else who wants to, um, me to play it. That'll be fun to do and give the proper time that is, is needed to play those. Okay, let's press enter. Or start in my case. Um, I guess we could check the controls, but I think we'll just jump in and see whether it's got any, um in-game controls here. Oh, did I turn the sound down completely? Hang on. There we go. Uh, yeah, so, oof. Okay, a couple of things. Let me just turn the volume down a little bit. Let me see if I can turn my graphics options down because it is struggling a little. Okay, that should be fine. Let's just resume. Uh, it is a F FPS Mario game uh, with a huge amount of polish from what I've heard. Um, and I just wanted to check this out. Oh, it's still showing the title. That's weird. Why is my window capture being so weird? There we go. Strange. Um, I think that the latest OBS update has has balked my um, screen recording stuff. I'm gonna have to look into this. Sorry, folks. Uh, I'll restart the level. Yeah, it is a uh, Super Mario themed FPS. I can fire plungers. Uh, there is a Goomba coming for me. And coins we can collect. Yes, agreed, Voxy. This really rocks. I can duck. I can jump. I'm just checking if there's any other controls I didn't know. Nice. That had to be in there. Can I collect this with a plunger? I can, nice. And I can break these blocks. to snipe the Goombas. <laughs> Freddy Killer says what Mario will look like in the year 2013. <laughs> oh, look at this. There's a, something blocking the pipe here. Oh yeah, by the way, Voxy, if you want me to take a look at your um, audio setup, at some point. I'm very, very happy to do so. Um, I know you mentioned it in today's stream. I'm gonna have to turn the graphics down a little bit, sorry. Um, this is pretty chunky. Oh, that is 
solar res. Hang on. Let's try and find a happy middle ground here. Also, I want the FOV up a tiny bit. Okay, sorry it's not going to look as beautiful as it could and should. Let's see an invisible block. That is our red coin. There's another one here. Wait, why is there coins over here now? Oh, I already got these. Yeah. Gotta play this on max FOV. Once we get to the end, uh, Disco, remind me and I'll show you what max FOV looks like on this. Can I just triple jump this? Oh, look at that. Suspended jump. Can I shoot the coins? Yes! Oh, this rocks. It just works. Black mushroom. Ooh! More powerful plunger. Oh my goodness, yes it is. I feel really bad for the Goombas. Oh, I thought I could just break the blocks with my face. Huh, I wonder whether... Oh no! Too bad. No parkour. Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's dash through. Oh! One hit and you're out! No, uh, no mini Mario. Alright, let's collect some coins. Oh. Need that black mushroom from up here. Oh, wait. Yes, I did collect a mushroom, right? So I have been made, like, into Big Mario, I guess. Yeah, there we go. So you can take two hits. You should be able to plunge and then jump on the plungers. I mean, that would be a nightmare to design levels around, but... Ooh. It's almost like an animation pretending to be a video game. Yeah, it has, like, big uh, game on a television show energy. You can kind of rapid fire that. I can't... Ledge grab. That looks like I should be able to ground pound it. Can I... Oh, I can ground pound! <gasps> if you ground pound, then jump immediately. It's like a long jump. Wait, jump, ground pound, jump. Whoa, that's so cool. Oh, that rocks. This is tough. I'm bad at all forms of Mario, it turns out. I think it's the movement, Voxy. The movement doesn't feel like most FPSs. Uh, and it's giving kind of like a canned animation vibe to it. Pound on the pipes. Oh, yes! No! Oh, the long jump after the ground pound is... goes against all my muscle memory. It looks like there's probably tons of secrets in this.
Yay! Nice. <laughs> Fell for the classic blunder. By the way, does anyone know, is this a version of the overworld theme um, from something else? We'll go this way. Can't ground pound that. It does look like we could probably ground pound this. The two whole red coins. Oh, you can also just jump on the Goombas like you normally would. Okay, let's go. <gasps> King Goomba! Oh, still only took one shot. Ground pound the log there. Okay, it looks like this is the flagpole. Also, I think my... I think my uh, left analog stick on this controller is broken. I think the dead zone's gone. Unless this game just hasn't ha got appropriate dead zo zones um, programmed in. I don't know. I'm constantly moving. Hey! I got 83% of enemies, 40% of coins, 2 out of 9 red coins, and it took me Thank 2 minutes so 40. For playing my game. Thank you so much for playing my game. Beautiful. Well. Um, that's going to do us for, um, what was it called? Super 1-1 one, one World? Um, and for today's stream, I guess, uh, I want to do more of these kind of grab baggy ones, and, um, like I say, I definitely will play through... Um, some non-GBG games that folks have created uh, next time round. <laughs> Foxy says, can you imagine if someone left before the end of the GG GD script segment and came back and thought you made this since then? Uh, I think they'd know. They'd, they'd know that I wouldn't have done it, but... Bye-bye! Um, Bye-bye! Uh, yeah, thank you everybody for hanging out today. Um, I gotta fix my OBS. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it was working fine until, uh, today. But I'm glad that we managed to make everything I wanted to get done here work. Um, we started with a little bit of Chrono Photo, then into the GD Quest resources for learning GD Script. Then on to um, some old Nintendo videos before finishing with Super 1 1 Challenge, a really cool little fan. Mario is an FPS game. Um, I will link all the stuff that we looked at today in the description after the VOD is finished. So the links to those um, Nintendo videos and the, uh, you know, the resources and the game as well. Uh, Voxy says, that was fun, but bring back Chibi Tuesday or else. Chibi Tuesday will return, um, just like last time. I'll take a little bit of a break on it because I think it's always nice to come back to it fresh. We don't want to have just finished up on another one. I know that uh, folks really love it, and um, I will come back to it, I promise. 
Not Freddy has been cooking in GBG and there's still quite a bit to do. Good look, Not Freddy. I um, cannot wait to see what you're making. Grab bag Tuesdays. It won't necessarily be a Tuesday thing, RJ. Uh, it's just that today is the first evening I've had free in a little while. Um, thank you everybody for your patience. Well, the last few weeks have been quiet on the old stream front. Um, yeah, it's been a, a bit of a busy time. Um, but I'm hoping that I'll be back to a bit more of a regular flow of things this week. Um, cool. Well, I'll see you on the Discord. I will definitely see you this weekend because we've got a GBG community stream as usual and a very special Fuse 4 stream with Dave on Sunday. Um, if not uh, anything between now and then, but I think they most likely will be. Uh, cool. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.